Welcome to Productivity Vibes, a production of the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council. Productivity Vibes is an informative magazine program on what's vibing in the areas of productivity and competitiveness. With the rising cost of petroleum and petroleum products, here are some tips for drivers to conserve fuel. Plan your route before leaving home or on a work assignment. Park your vehicle and take a walk for short trips. Slow down and drive steady. Fast driving increases fuel consumption. Monitor when and how you brake. Applying brakes excessively wastes fuel. Turn off the engine. Excess idling is a major waste of fuel. Monitor your tires. Underinflated tires tend to wear out quicker and waste fuel. Service your vehicle regularly. Turn off your AC. Using your air conditioning system too often can turn your car into a gas guzzler. The Caribbean Digital Transformation Program is geared at improving everything digital, from skills, infrastructure, platforms, services and entrepreneurship throughout St. Lucia, Dominica, Grenada and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The digital skills gap is a major constraint which impedes productivity throughout the OECS. In our What's Trending segment, we focus on the Caribbean Digital Transformation Program, funded by the World Bank to unlock growth within the digital economy. The Caribbean Digital Transformation Program aims to deliver a dynamic, inclusive and safe digital economy, requiring a comprehensive ecosystem which simultaneously builds on several interlocking foundations, namely digital infrastructure, platforms, financial services, digital skills, entrepreneurship and innovation. The Caribbean Digital Transformation Project is really one of the key projects that seeks to revolutionize the delivery of public services to the general public, well, citizens at large, both locally as well as the diaspora. Um, the project is funded by the World Bank to the tune of 20 million US dollars and it spans five years. It's over five, will be implemented over a five year period. The DigiGov project, approved by the government of St. Lucia, aims to deliver 154 government services via an online platform. DigiGov provides opportunities for e-learning and citizens' interaction with government online to improve service delivery and resilience. And so with the negotiations for the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project, we've, we saw the need to have um, create that enabling environment. So we're focusing on areas like um, digital enabling, environment like uh, legal, in, legal infrastructure, the legal framework that needs to be put in place to support technology adoption and digital transformation. Um, also looking at um, the additional gaps we identified even with DigiGov, you know, and ma making sure that we are able to set up those three critical databases that are needed for government's operations. So looking at the people database, our civil status registry for example, um, the land registry database and also the business database. And so with DigiGov, we had two of them covered. DigiGov is covering the business registry as well as the civil service registry. But there was no, it was, the land component was not included. But we're now pushing that land component through the digital, the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project. That's one area. From inception, the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, worked closely with the Department of Public Sector Modernization and the World Bank in finalizing the various components of the project. The NCPC is responsible for component three of the project, which deals with digital skills and entrepreneurship. The National Competitiveness Agenda identified a number of challenges that hinders both productivity and competitiveness. Firstly, we have the lack of skills. Those are the required skills that we need globally 
in order to embrace the fourth industrial revolution, which speaks to advanced digital skills. A lack of technology adoption by businesses, especially our traditional businesses. Thirdly, our ability to develop the innovative and research capacities that will lead to new opportunities, new products, new niches that can support the growth within the overall economy. We are also leveraging a lot of the infrastructure that has been put in place through CASIP, right? So um, throughout government, DigiGov will be available um, internally as well as we have also utilized this internal network to provide additional security for the platform. So the administrative functions of DigiGov can only be done through the government local network. Um, so um, with, with, with um, the implementation of CASIP, we've seen so much more opportunity for innovation and to really provide that creative opportunity for our um, internal stakeholders as well as to bring in the private sector in place. So as part of the Caribbean Digital Transformation as well, dovetailing on that, there is also the um, component of the project which seeks to look at digital skills and technology services. Project milestones have begun to materialize, such as opportunities for accelerating digital literacy, digital transformation and adoption. And today, every single child in Form 1 in St. Lucia is being issued a brand new government paid for laptop computer. We are undertaking several procurement initiatives for the project. A very significant one is the provision of digital devices to grade six students, from one students, their teachers, as well as the Ministry of, of Education to assist in the delivery of online learning for these students, um, given the backdrop of COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic. We've also, I've also taken this opportunity as well to really try to build our own internal capacity um, in support of the project. So for example, a lot of the terms of reference that you would normally um, have that done by a consultant outside, we're creating those terms of reference. We're also looking at um, advancing the skill sets of persons who are already involved or already employed within the ICT sector to complement their skill sets um, with the hope of making St. Lucia and the Eastern Caribbean a hub, a hub for the provision of services, ICT services to the international market or the global market. In partnership with the National Enrichment and Learning Program, NELU, the Caribbean Digital Transformation Program will provide ICT training for over 300 persons from the unemployed to the small business owner from across the island at CVQ and NVQ levels. In addition, the regional, the regional project will be undertaking a regional skills assessment and so this will assist in determining some of the, the types of, of courses that would be available. Therefore, in the areas of skills and competitiveness, there are three areas that we will be addressing. Digital skills training, adoption of digital technology in traditional sectors, incubator acceleration program that will provide support to selected MSMEs. The fourth component of the project focuses on project implementation, support, monitoring and evaluation. Beneficiaries of the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project include St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada and Dominica. Do you run a business? Do you use data in your decision making? Meet Gina and Lyle, two entrepreneurs. Gina knows that if she wants her business to grow, she must rely on quality data to make the right decision. Gina uses Pro Tool. Pro Tool tells Gina how well her business is performing and tells her where she needs to make changes. Gina's data-driven decisions are working. Her business grows stronger and more profitable. Lyle makes his business decisions from his gut. Who needs data? After all, he knows what's best and does not need figures to tell him how to run his business. Lyle notices the business is struggling. He does not know why or what he needs to change. 
the business is crumbling. Gina has the winning formula. A business guided by data-driven decisions becomes profitable. Use Pro Tool to measure the productivity of your business and reap the rewards. Pro Tool. Plan to succeed with data-driven solutions. In our Innovators segment, we feature a young entrepreneur, a mother of four who started off in the tourism industry but has now found her niche in the traditional medicine industry. Her love for plants, nature and St. Lucian culture has spirited her creativity and innovation in the production of traditional medicines. She says helping others live a better quality of life is more than just a business for her. Meet an inspiring entrepreneur who has ventured into the field of natural medicines. Fushen, a mother of four, started a business called Skin Glow, where she produces 100% organic products to improve the physical well-being of her customers. Okay, my name is Fushen. I have a Chinese name. Okay, I'm from Babono, yes. A little Chinese name, but I'm St. Lucian. What I do is I make organic products. I make organic soaps, I do essential oils, I do natural steams for the hair, you know. I believe you all natural, there's no chemicals, there's no side effects, there's no toxins. You're not looking at a long term of an illness creeping up on you because you're natural. There's absolutely no side effects. So I do as body scrubs. You know, too many people have veins. Their job is a lot of standing. They, have, they don't have a choice, but they need to be able to maintain that. Ginger helps with blood circulation along with the turmeric. Ginger fights inflammation, which is also very good. So that's a two-in-one that you're getting. And it also helps you to be able to move your muscles comfortably again, because ginger helps with muscle pain. You know, I also do hair steams. The hair steam would be aloe, you have avocado, and the egg white. What this does, it strengthens your hair the roots of your hair, you want bounce, you want body, you want fullness. Then you put your steam, you put your little shower cap on, and you, have to, you know, you do your little stuff at home and you're fine. You almost forget it's there when you're ready, you wash it off. And it's cost effective. I also have an oil, it's called Amla and Cactus Oil. What this does, blood circulation in your scalp, which is very important for the hair to grow back new cells in your hair bed. This helps with blood circulation. It strengthens the roots. You know, as women, we start going through menopause. It's a natural process everybody has to go through. That stops hair loss. I do organic soaps. I have ginger and turmeric. A lot of young ladies, when they get a bit heavy, their legs rubbing together. Very unpleasant to see. This takes off the dark mark. Ingrown hairs, acne. Small and acne especially. You know, we like the little snacks and the little treats, but there's an after effect with all of this good stuff. Breakouts. Women, when the cycle is coming, it's beyond our control. You will get a breakout. You want to not allow people to see this. And the mask is helping everything. Sometimes you get one right there. You want to have that eradicated. You put that ginger and turmeric on by the night, the next morning it's flat. The mark disappears. The benefits to this is no toxins. You wet your body, your pores open. They absorb anything you put in there. But when you go natural, let me tell you, Moringa, Neem, Fenugreek, a nerve that nourishes, helps and enhances the body, can't go wrong. And I'm gonna help you now by giving you what God has given me today. I'll share some with you. Her warm personality and product satisfaction has brought her glowing reviews and repeat business from customers locally and regionally. Well, you see, I work with African doctors, I work with herbal doctors, ancient African remedies. And one of the things we speak and promote and take care of is to heal, to, take, to treat, and to make sure that you come out with 100% results. I work with these doctors. I am, I am privileged to be working with African doctors. So let me tell you, they were my whole inspiration. As you can see, I do my Seamus and Smovies, and it's a natural product, and I be in the hot sun, you know, every day. So I used to get some burns, 
and my, you know, sunburns, which damaging my forehead, everything, you know, and stuff. And I started using a soap, the Skin Glow. Um, the one I usually use is the ginger and turmeric. You know, I use it every morning. Now, for this to work, you know, it's like a constant thing. You cannot do it once and, you know, not doing it. Like you get up and you will not do it again. You have to keep on doing it so you can see the improvement. You know, and it worked for me. As you can see, my face is clear, you know. One day I was walking around and I managed to speak to her. I told her I was having some problem with some rashes and looked at Max, my back. She had an inspection of it and she told me she have a product there for me. After that I purchased the Castellata soap and, uh, and the oil. I did, I did wash and bathe about three days and noticed the difference. One of the main differences I, I noticed was that at night, my back is scratching me. But since I'm start using the product, all the scratch has gone and my skin is very clear now. So I'd recommend that product to anybody who has a problem like me. I use a ginger and turmeric for my face and it works very well because I had severe dark marks, acne, and acne scarring after I burst the pimples. So my face is all clear now. I to see when someone can come back and smile and say look at my face today and they're happy and they're glowing and they're more confident. You've helped someone to be more confident about themselves and that plays a very important role. Though Skin Glow is still a fledgling business, Fushen had some words of advice for young people endeavoring to start up their own businesses. Do something that you have a passion for, that you will excel at something you're very knowledgeable about because knowledge is power. If I'm very knowledgeable about my herbs, I can help you. I have Catalezom, which is Leaf of Life customers. I have Feiduva, which in English is called Gully Hen Weed customers. I also have Fenugreek. I have Virgin Oil customers. I have Compressed Coconut Oil customers. If I'm knowledgeable enough about my natural herbs, then I can help. So this is the first thing that this young person needs to think about. The next thing is to be disciplined. Discipline means you have a set time and set days you're supposed to be there, not because you're self-employed. People expect you to be there. Be disciplined about that. People respect you, they respect your business, and they appreciate the fact that, hey, I can rely on her, she's there, I can just, I don't have to call, she makes herself, make yourself readily available to help. Be patient, be observant, go with your passion. This is your passion, you push, you excel, you, you work with it, you work with people. A customer comes to you, she has a problem, she may not have the money, you build a customer, repeat business. Personality, character, hospitality is also what you're bringing. The energy is important. You're in medicine, you're into health. Always make a point of bringing this type of energy in that you get back that energy. You can help to make a difference. You can make a difference. Say the right things, give them the right things, educate them with the right things. You make a difference. It's about productivity. It's a vibe. It's innovation. It's about confidence. It's all about creativity. It's a competitive spirit. It's making a difference. It's problem solving. It's data driven. It's creativity. It's a very positive mindset. <laughs> it's NCPC, baby. It's a vibe. It's a productivity vibe. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council. Embracing excellence. On Productivity Insights, we feature the National Housing and Population Census, an enterprise census being conducted simultaneously by the Central Statistics Office in the Department of Finance. The census is an important instrument which provides vital data for evidence-based decision-making. When completed, the census will allow for the development of targeted interventions to spur economic growth and productivity.
The objective of today's activity is simple. It's just it's simply to um, seek their support, the assistance and cooperation of the media to convey to the public that the population housing census is still on the cards and we intend to conduct, implement the census this year. The, prob the main problem is refusal. People refusing to participate in the census. And I want to appeal to St. Lucian's to be a little more friendly. We are, we are known as a friendly people. The census essentially is a very critical tool in our system of government and private enterprise. Um, the census represents the single best, single source of information on demographics and socio-economic conditions that, that will obtain in, in the country at um, any particular point in time. The main objective of conducting a census is to collect information from each household, on each individual, about um, some of the main characteristics of our country. The sex breakdown of the population, the age, how young it is, how old it is, uh, the prevalence of crime in the society, how many different types of assets households have, um, uh, things like uh, the experience of unemployment and very importantly an appendage to the census will be uh, well a central feature of the census will be the incorporation of the an agricultural component. I think what they need to know what St. Lucians need to know is that the census is important not just for government but also for the private sector um, because government collects data that gives them information about the country, and so it is important that they participate. The census is a very extensive undertaking, um, from the preparation to the implementation, and to the data processing, and to the um, final report. And um, this takes a lot of time and effort. We, we have gone past the preparatory stage of the census. Right now we are at the implementation phase where we have our field officers out there collecting the data. Um, once we've gotten past that phase, we would enter into the data processing phase and data analysis. Um, what that would entail is that we would, um, once all the data is entered, we would, do very, we would undertake very, various very, very verification exercises um, and um, ensure that the data that is collected is sound, accurate, and then thereafter it will be analyzed to prepare a report. Um, and this is what the process entails. Um, this process normally spans um, one and a half to two years from the preparatory to the actual um, report writing. We need to be a little more receptive to the enumerators. We are solutions just like you. What we're doing is a service to our country. Okay, we need the information so we can develop. We can move from one point to the next. All over the world, we have censuses being done. All over the world. Okay, Senusha is no different. And we always complain about development and we're not getting this and we're not getting that. But if we fail to provide the information, then the powers that be, be it governments, be it private sector, cannot move forward. So we need to come together as a people, we need to rally around our nation and provide the information to the enumerators. Nobody wants to know our business. The information is going to be used to develop the country and make this country a better place. The information that would be gained from, that would be gained from the census, it would allow us to, to, um, to calculate our um, GDP per capita. And that is a critical um, indicator as it relates to our standings internationally. There are other indicators that, 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 that most certainly that re rely on the information that comes out of the census. Um, productivity, for instance. Um, one way of calculating productivity is GDP by the number of employed persons. Um, this also gives an indication as how productive we are. Um, investors look forward, look, look towards that, those sort of indicators um, to, to have a sense as it relates to whether they, 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 they should be investing in a country um, depending on the productivity um, level. So most certainly the, the, the international, it's not just the, the, the national users, but we also have regional, national, international users that are looking forward to the results of this census. Um, these types of censuses are very, very important to ensure that we 
get a comprehensive listing of all businesses, all business activities on the island. All business persons, whether you have a cottage industry at home, you're doing your little um, cake making, your little, you're doing your little thing, vending. We want everybody to fully participate so we can get to the next level in terms of the development of our businesses. This time around for our population and housing census, we decided to run the enterprise census as well. So this, um, this round of the population and housing census, we're using tablets for, for, um, for the first time, right? Comprehensively. So um, we trained about, uh, I think 800 individuals or so for the population and housing census, but we only selected about maybe 600. Okay, so the remaining 200 or so, we engage them on the um, enterprise census because they would have already had the training, the required training in terms of use of the tablets, um, use of maps, how to navigate through the um, enumeration districts across the island and so on. But in terms of the enterprise census itself, it's a very, very, very critical data collection exercise for several reasons. We lack evidence, valid, reliable evidence, hardcore data to guide our decisions, how we develop our different industries and so on. So this time, like, we are speaking directly about pro productivity, which is a very, very critical element to, to measure and monitor in order for you to understand how you develop your economy, how you develop the, the respective industries within the economy, operating within the economy. So in terms of the, the data that we, we collect um, through this enterprise survey, we would establish that labor productivity um, indicator, value added per worker. Very, very important um, um, measure in terms of providing evidence that you could use to develop your economy. You could look at critical industries that are underperforming in terms of um, productivity, okay, this value added per worker, and look at ways and means in which you could um, increase your value added. I want to transform St. Lucia. I want to make my mark. I want to make a difference. Through research and innovation, we can transform our country. Improve the lives of all St. Lucians and give our fair Helen the competitive advantage. Research calls us to investigate, study and reach new conclusions. Which allows us to innovate, to create new methods, ideas, products and technology. For more information, follow and like us on Facebook at Solution NCPC, the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. This brings us to the end of another episode of Productivity Vibes, the NCPC's monthly magazine program on what's trending in the areas of productivity and competitiveness. Send us your ideas or suggestions for upcoming programs at stluciancpc at gmail.com and follow us on our Facebook and YouTube channels. See you again next time.